Hey Knights, we're going to watch another Inside Star Citizen Driving Force, uh, Winter 2021. Uh, obviously what I do here is I watch it and then, uh, you know, this is my first time watching it. Um, but I'll give my opinions on things or, or maybe I'll even have questions that maybe you guys can help me out with. Um, but, uh, but let's go ahead and get started here. So ever since I was like a kid, really, I was interested in cars and that interest in cars went to building them. And then I ended up kind of racing competitive esports for a while. And that kind of got me into the game industry, which allowed me to combine pretty much. I do, you know, I've always liked how Star Citizen has, you know, had this shock and, and, and the, the vehicles feel pretty real when it comes to physics um you know there there are some things i guess they could work on but uh but right now it, it seems really good um i hope they can obviously optimize driving better uh meaning i think that right now like with ships you can you have basically like a throttle control you can throttle control your ships i'm hoping they also do that with vehicles because right now um unless you maybe have like a i don't know if if like force sensitive um controllers work or not but right now when i hit w on the keyboard and i'm driving a vehicle it's either all or nothing you know so that that i hope I hope they bring in, I hope they bring in throttle control to vehicles. All my passions really that I have about vehicles and build them <laughs> in video games. Oh wow. That's basically a dream come true for me. Now, <laughs> hopefully in the future they make it to where if you did that, you're going to, you're going to tear this little thing all to pieces. Um, you know, that was a pretty long jump and then it slammed into the, um, the ship and that also brings up another thing the ship shields i wonder how these work and let me know down in the comments you know if you can kind of let me know how this works now how does the ship discern like the shields how did the shields discern from you know a vehicle coming in off of a building and allowing the vehicle to pass through the shields and into this bay and like ballistics you know so shields kind of sort of stop ballistics um you know that that's what i understand anyways i could be wrong let me know um but you know how, how does like why does it stop ballistics but not the golf cart <laughs> you know the and that's a glorified golf cart buys it's cool i like it i'd love to have one in real life but uh so is it the speed at which it's coming in at or or what uh, tell me in the comments let me know i've been a fan of both planes and spaceships and cars in equally for years it's definitely something that i am invested in and i really want to make it good and everything my background is physics i so love the shock spaceship physics or ground vehicle physics it's all physics to me it's it's excellent and it's a lot of fun you know, making the ground vehicles better and give us this ability to have a Cycling. more varied experience in gameplay. Like, they're never obviously going to match the maneuverability. Now, right now, the Cyclone, if you watched that, it was going through rocks. Like, you, you saw the wheels just kind of, like, face through the rocks. You know, hopefully in the future they'll fix that because I don't, I don't want to just face through rocks because that just kind of tells me that you know, I don't know if, like, if you got out of your vehicle, if you could walk through the rocks. I don't think you can. Um, so it makes me wonder how the vehicle's phasing through the rocks. But, you know, it's... Uh, I hope they fix that in the future. And I cannot wait for the Nova tank. Um, it's hard to say how the Nova tank is going to be, like, utilized when it comes to Star Citizen. Uh, we'll just... I guess we'll have to see. You know, maybe if you have a player base and you need to protect it, but... You know, you would also need like a ballista, like an anvil ballista to protect from air as well, because I can see, I can see ships just annihilating tanks. Abilities of the spaceship, but they serve a different purpose. 
with a spaceship you can fly around you can get an overview of the planet but if you go down on the ground you get a much greater sense of the detail and the scale yeah. of the universe at the moment i've been supporting the work that bjarni has been doing on ground vehicles which is really really exciting the uh, the physics model entire model that he's been working on is one of the most interesting things i've seen in a while so right now we're uh, working on a more physically based tire model. It's actually built on empirical data, so like real world data from, from tires. So the tire model uh, handles how the, the wheel contacts to the ground. And um, so we simulate that actually with... Uh, I'm hoping when you like, let me, I've got to back up here a little bit. So and, uh, when he runs over this plant, again, I'm hoping in the future <laughs> that plant just splatters everywhere um, instead of just phasing through it uh, hopefully they bring that to us that they you know CIG seems like they they are that hardcore so hopefully they will do that so we simulate that actually with uh, this uh, curve that um, that is calculated from the the slip of the wheel now the slip of the wheel is actually is how how fast the wheel is turning, how fast the engine turns the wheel relative to the ground that's moving beneath it. The tire model that we're using right now works fine, but it's a little bit too arcadey, uh, and we want to explore moving into a more physical based one. So each of the ground vehicles all are like wildly different ground vehicles, right? Look at all those ground vehicles. I mean, that's, you know, it's pretty much the same version of you know many different vehicles um like you know the cyclone's got about 40 versions of it not really me exaggerating um but i mean look at all the cyclones the versions of them which is cool i like that i really do um that's another topic that i'd like for them to do with ships uh but you know this is the anvil ballista that i was talking about that would have to like escort the uh the, the nova tanks because again i think the nova tanks would just get annihilated by um, by spacecraft. Having more flexibility um, over how you can tune the, the vehicles and a more physically accurate way to tune the vehicles will result in a more believable experience that is easier for us to achieve. And as a result, it's kind of pushed us to improve the system. So the result for the player is that you will see more vehicles that are behaving in the way that you expect. Um, they sort of interact with the terrain much more correctly hang on I got, i'm sorry i gotta go back to this because it looked like the oh yeah improve. see that that is cool and as a result you it's can kind see of where it actually shifts oh yeah i like that system. so the i'm not sure if it does it now i think it you does you will see more but vehicles that are behaving good. in the way that you expect um they sort of interact with the terrain much more correctly you can slide them and also have periods of grip and so on that is what you expect and it, it's easier for us to now, I don't that, think so get that. he's mentioning sliding um, and I'm sorry I'm this is that you know he said it and then I got to thinking about it I think that sometimes when you're sliding um, you know if you hit a dip or something uh, I think it should you know roll your vehicle over I don't think it should you know slide on it I think it should depend on what kind of terrain you're on if you're sliding or not so I hope they factor that in as well more often so each of the ground vehicles you know all the ground vehicles we've made so far have have very different roles and working on the rock improved ground vehicles because it was the first kind of ground vehicle to have a specific kind of purpose and place where it needed to be because it had to be placed in difficult places to mine um so we definitely kind of look back over the, the technology we had and we definitely made some improvements there it definitely feels better oh, across the, the surface and also it's the first ground vehicle that we properly tuned the camera for that we had developed previously for the spaceships so we've got a camera that communicates when the vehicle is sliding when you're flying around the corners in that vehicle you can really feel the grip that it has we're also working on the uh, tank at the moment um, this has been a big driving force behind a lot of the improvements we're making. So we've got access now to a lot more parameters and it's the first vehicle to use the track physics which we have. So oh, it's not steering awesome. by wheels turning. Um, it's steering by a difference in speed between the different treads. 
tech that's come with the tank is no, I can't wait just for it. some more fine-tuning options now that we didn't have before and that drastically improves the feel and also the ability of the ground vehicles to do things as well Look how big we're also working on is. the new cyclone mt which is you know kind of made us look at the kind of missile experience that we have with the ground vehicles and how well, it drastically changes out. the needs of the missiles and how they aim it's also basically highlighted the fact that we also need to massively change how we communicate the ground vehicle experience um you know overall with the ui you know because we don't have ui for the ground vehicles right now um you know to the same standard as the ships it's probably fair to say that the um it's probably one of my favorite vehicles um, it's probably one of my favorite vehicles, the Cyclone. So adding kind of missiles to that just adds an element of kind of fun and destruction for me. So as far as ground vehicles moving forward, where we go is um, we start with a core time model improvement, which will drastically improve the kind of overall physics that drives the ground vehicle. They're basically on top of that, we've already done some work on the camera system, but we need to create more of a bespoke experience with the camera. So, you know, we're looking at improvements to the core camera system, and that all come just from a more realistic physics base. I'll and be honest been... about the cameras, okay? And a lot of people will probably disagree with me on this. Um, I don't like third person, especially in a universal sim or universe sim simulator like like star citizen um i'm hoping that when they come out that the only camera you're going to have is through your eyes i'm just not a third person type of person type person um to me it just takes away because you know when you're playing in third person if you're hiding, hiding behind this rock right here you just go into third person and now you can kind of, you know, see around the rock. I don't, I don't like that. Um, I don't like that in ships either. Now, if there's a drone that you could launch inside and you go in, you know, into like a little uh, monitor or, you know, maybe it goes through your helmet or whatever and you can fly around that way, that's fine. You know, I don't consider that third person. However, you know, just, hitting oh uh f4 on my keyboard and i'm going in the third person I, i'm sorry i don't i don't like that and you can disagree with me I'll, you know you can uh send me hate mail whatever but that's just i think it takes away from the experience in my opinion i'm gonna go full simulation here and require you to have a, a full steering wheel set up but we want the same feelings and emotions to be expressed with the ground vehicle so that it feels right and then, a big part of the ground vehicle experience that we would definitely want to improve is the lack of the hood, to be fair, to be frank with you. Um, and also just bring the ground vehicles up to the same standards in terms of all the systems. Then in the future, add the missile operator mode UI as well, so you'll have all the same systems that the ships do. And then someday we'll have coordinates of the compass on the hood as well, so um, you don't get lost. Because I get lost quite a lot on the planets. But that's just because I end up landing somewhere random and... You know, just go for a drive and... <laughs> he sounds like me. I just watch the sunset. Randomlin. Ra ramble, Randomlin. More than just That's a, a new space. word. It's a means to Rambling. explore the cosmos and make your way through the universe, charting a path that's uniquely your own. And wherever that path happens to take you, you're likely to need a ground vehicle at some point along the way. But when you're not adventuring, maybe you'll spend your time in your hab, your outpost, or your local hospital. Let's take a look now at how some of those are progressing and more in this week's Sprint Report. Uh -oh. Starting things off this week, let's begin with some smaller updates from the EUPU feature team, who just completed a sprint on bug fixes and visual updates to existing systems like the refinery kiosks, including this new welcome splash screen and a fix to the closed window button that, well, wasn't working before. They also added an auto logout for those people to... I do like how they've done the refinery system. I think that was very innovative. Um, I think it was very cool. Um, they have really did a really good job on this, in my opinion. Go to the library and like to leave their email open for anyone else to see. They also continue to work on the mining UI in line with the new subcomponents we talked about last week. The new additions allow for the display of precise benefits from each component, and also work for the previous consumables as well, so players can better and more knowledgeably tune their mining experience. 
They're also working on animating the scan We've bars. talked about of... this in a previous video uh, when we were watching about mining. Um, and at first, I didn't kind of understand the modules. Um, hey, I didn't say modular. Uh, at first, I didn't understand the modules. Um, because, you know, you have your usables or uh, burnables. Um consumables there we go and they already help you but yes you consume like you can only use them for like so like you can use one consumable like six times and then you know you have to buy another one so i didn't really quite understand that at first but now um it's it's all about customization so you know you can do more customizing with it and i like it of an overall push to expose more and more information to the player Members of the modular content team recently completed a sprint on the non-commercial overlays for refinery decks coming to Alpha 313. What you're seeing here at the moment is a pre-lighting pass, which always does a lot to sell the proper mood and atmosphere of industrial areas like this. What they did here was take some of the more common traversal areas in several of the stations and began ripping out many of the adverts that were present exposing more of the layered industrial guts that were previously hidden to the player from underneath. Also gone are some of the seating areas, plants, decor, and other amenities found in the larger stations, and a more utilitarian and functional space is left in its wake. Now this isn't being applied to every station, but only a few select smaller ones with refinery decks in an effort to distinguish them a bit more from their Okay, I mean, he said it didn't do all of them like that, which, which is okay. Uh, but I've always saw these space stations as like truck stops. Uh, that's how I've seen them. So, of course, you're going to have like little plants and you're going to have, you know, seating and, 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 and things like that. Um, so, I don't, hopefully they didn't take it out of every one of them, you know, just because you're, you know, but again, I thought they were going to like separate, you know, like the refineries from the, like you would have like a separate refinery landing area, um, from, you know, another, uh, the rest area landing, like where you just come in and land. But, you know, maybe they're not going to do that. I, I was under the impression that they would do that though. I just think it would to me, it would make more sense to have a refinery area, you know, separate from the rest stop or truck stop, you know, space shop, whatever, space stop. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know. They're flashier, more commercialized cousins. Now, it may be a bit flat looking at the moment, but once the lighting pass changes are in, It'll begin to bring out the personality I'll be honest. more in these. I think I think they took out the seats and the plants uh, to improve performance. I think when they did the lighting and everything, uh, maybe it hindered performance more. So you know, sacrifice. So maybe to sacrifice what they did is that okay? We would rather have better lighting than just random, you know other things that are in in this place such as uh, benches and, and and trees and and bushes and whatever so you know instead of that we're going to take this stuff out and then put the better lighting in um what would you guys rather have would you guys rather have better lighting or more like a cosmetic you know plants and which lighting is cosmetic but industrialized stations if you remember our segment on the Interaction Zoo with Calix from last year, you wow. may be excited Whoa. to hear that folks from the lighting team have begun to dig into his toy box of technical knickknacks and playthings to set up a habitation test bed of their own, starting with splitting all of the existing lighting into sectional circuits. Oh, that, that is affected awesome. affected by the player individually. Oh, man. Such as a proximity sensor in the foyer to light and delight the entrance. A master control panel with different lighting states for the entire hab. I love it. Localized controls for each distinct area, like the kitchen or the bunk. I love that. 
And yes. then, in case you still weren't able to set exactly the move I'm sorry, you guys. For, <laughs> I know. I know this is... I'm getting too excited about this, but... I was hoping they were going to do this. And I hope they do it on ships as well, because uh, that's just... Oh, man. It, it just add so much immersion to the game uh, i'm sorry i didn't mean to get so excited by the way this is, looks like one of those dyson fans don't it control of the individualized prop lights like lamps giving players unprecedented oh. control of how they light their own space oh that's cool the next step wow. in this prototyping is to explore integrating the destructible and replaceable colored lights from the interaction zoo providing even more customization options for players going forward. Let's check in on the continuing white box progress of hospitals by stepping into New Babbage once more and seeing where they're at. Now this is the view when you leave the service ward and enter the lobby, and right off the bat, we can see the ceiling has been altered since the last we saw it to reveal even more of the Aspire Grand up above. The pharmacy is still on the right, but now on the left, we have new information and security stations as well. Now, if we head back into the wards themselves, we can find nice communal areas like this gorgeous view of the new Babbage skyline. Off to the left and right leads to nurse and doctor and triage stations and many of the kinds of areas you'd expect to find in a fully functioning hospital. Now, even though this is still in white... I know something funny. I thought these right here were grills. Okay, uh, I guess that's how redneck I am. I, I don't know, but <laughs> I thought this was a grill. That is a obviously a bed of some sort. In a fully functioning Don't hospital. judge me. Now, even though this is still in white box phase, you can imagine what it'll look like with New Babbage's trademark signage helping to distinguish between the various recovery rooms, surgical theaters, uh, storage areas, blood labs, and more. And if you play like I do, you're gonna spend a lot of time here, so it's important that it can handle the load. Did I make that same joke last time? You bet I did. It's a test to see if anybody's paying attention to what's being said here. Fidelity, immersion, bespoke. The hospital will really punch above its weight class. Now it wouldn't be a sprint report these days without a continuing look at the progress of our colonialism outposts. Yes. So here's a look at further White Box progress. Most of the work this sprint was in determining all the things White Box is normally used for, such as working out how all the various modules will connect and function with one another, figuring out how to set up the necessary viz areas while adapting for the sloped exterior walls, continuing to work out all the necessary now, runtime environment. From what I understand, these uh, HUDs and, you know, these outposts and stuff, you will be able, as a player, to choose where you want these. Um, so, you know, these aren't... Now, at first, when they, they introduce them, at first, it'll be like AI stuff, okay? So, you're going to have, like, they're going to be scattered throughout some planets um, and it's going to be AI only from what I understand. Uh, but eventually when it comes to players, you will eventually be able to take your friends or whatever, gather the resources and build these. Okay. So you'll be able to build like little bases on other planets and stuff like that. And you're going to have to keep them supplied as well. So that is, that is awesome. Uh, I mean, I absolutely love it. Look at that view. ...probes needed to allow lighting from the exterior to creep in through the windows to the interior and potentially the other way around as well. Basically, it's work preserving the necessary modularity so that these outposts can work in multiple configurations while adapting the blend... ...where the magic happens. ...tech to properly allow for spill into each room without noticeable lines everywhere. Folks also want to take another pass at this bathroom area, which is currently feeling a bit too much like a spaceship and not what we'd expect to see in a frontier outpost. They're also working with design to mark out interactable areas or future spaces for players to customize their space further with equipment or even decorative flair all their own. The social space in the center has gone through several iterations in the last couple weeks. As things sometimes do, 
it began to bloom. Well, see, inside. here's the thing. You know, he was saying the bathroom looks like a spaceship bathroom. Some people might like that. Um, and I'm hoping that these things are as customizable as we want them to be. You know, I'm hoping we can customize the customize these outposts and and the, these buildings to to what we want, not what Star Citizen wants. You you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm hoping we can make it ours. That's what I'm hoping. So if someone likes the spaceship bathroom, I think they should have that option. Um, if you agree with me, uh, comment below. Eyes before it was decided to bring it back in to a more intimate setting. Here we see one of the various connection callers that can link to a number of different modules, including this garage we first showed a couple weeks ago. The current thinking here is that there should be an airlock here so that the garage can be depressurized if necessary on certain planets or moons, I do agree. as well as a hatch up above for the very same reason. I agree. Ultimately, it's just nice to follow along with the continued progress of these outposts that'll first be used in NPC settlements across Stanton and Pyro. Yep, and then right eventually there. First going to be used for NPC or AI settlements. Uh, so I was right about that. ...be rolled out to player use after that. Finally, before we let you go this week, there are sprints and then there are tiny oh, experiments devs do from time to time to see what's possible. And recently, someone on the VFX team tried revisiting our existing lightning effects ahead of some... Okay, <laughs> look at this. That is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm hoping that uh, this is what it's going to look like in-game. Because uh, sometimes they show us this, this stuff, and when it comes out into game, it's a little bit duller, um, if you know what I mean. It's not as vibrant, uh, but that is that is absolutely gorgeous. Some expected work on Pyro, and then combining that with our new and upcoming emissive particle lighting system to see if they could improve the look of one of Star Citizen's oldest assets, the Dying Star from Arena Commander. Now this is literally a VFX doodle done during a meeting. But it's got others excited about the possibilities, not just in improving existing maps like Arena Commander, but applications elsewhere like in gas clouds in the Persistent Universe and at the center of the forthcoming Pyro system, which was the inspiration for Arena Commander's map to begin with. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that there are many ways left to improve the ground vehicle experience in Star Citizen and that some of those are already underway right now. That there's a new Cyclone variant on the way and driving improvements for all vehicles alongside development of the Nova Tank and the recently released Grey Cat Rock. That Habs may someday let you light up your life any way you want. And that those outposts just can't come soon enough. But they'll be Jared. worth the wait. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. Thank you, Jared. So, this is... This is awesome. Uh, they did really good with uh, this inside Star Citizen. Um, so that's that's awesome. They, there's a lot of things to look forward to. But I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if there's any questions or anything uh, that you want to ask me, just uh, ask in the comments and I'll try to get with you. Uh, I appreciate it. And hope you guys come back to me for more news or or more thoughts or opinions. And uh, you guys have a good one. Thank you, Knights.